Now before I get started on doing any actual rehab work on this boat trailer, I need to correct a couple of things. Because this trailer was actually made for a larger boat than a 14 footer, which is what I have, the trailer is actually very long. It's longer than I need it to be. I need to shorten it up some. Luckily for me, that's gonna be pretty simple because this is an adjustable trailer. What I'm able to do with this trailer is take out this bolt right here and then slide the tongue of the trailer back. It slides right through this channel right here. They've got some pre-drilled holes here and here to adjust it. So that will allow the trailer to be proportioned for the boat. Second thing I wanna do, and this is more personal preference to me, is fix these bunks. These bunks are standing upright right now and for me, personal preference, I would prefer flat bunks. So turning the two by four horizontally. That's a personal preference of mine. You can have it whichever way you want, but that's just how I like it. And the reason being for me is I like to have more surface support in the boat. I don't want these pressure points, like a two inch pressure point on either side of my boat to hold all the weight. I'm going to create new bunk boards because I don't like this color and the carpet's pretty worn out. I'm gonna create some new bunks and put some brackets here. I'll go over all of that to make it all work. Now that that's out the way, it's time to sand everything down. I'm doing this to remove all the rust spots and any calcification on the trailer. This will prep the surface for paint. For the first round of sanding, I primarily use a combination of a light wire brush and the orbital sander with 80 grit sandpaper. And what I did was to alternate between the two depending on the condition of the trailer. I used 80 grit sandpaper to reduce the time spent sanding, but to do so, I needed to be really careful how much pressure I put on the orbital sander to not go too deep and leave sanding tracks on the aluminum. Them. And as a handy tip, make sure to pay close attention when pulling everything apart so that you can get it all back together easily. And if you need to label things, label it. Trust me, you'll thank me later. It took a very long time to get it all sanded, but it's one of the most important steps to make sure the finished product looks great. When you're doing this, be sure to take your time and get in all the cracks and crevices. Oh, and don't forget, wear a respirator. After all, you don't want the aluminum dust to get in your lungs, it is toxic. The rims were a little rusted, the hubs had some wear and tear on the outside, and the tires were a bit dry rotted. So all of that needed to be replaced, which I'll get to later in this video. After sanding, I cleaned with acetone to remove any dust or residue left behind. Before painting, be sure to tape up all your lights as well as any labels like your trailer specs, regulatory stickers, and of course your VIN number. All right, so most of the cleaning is done. I'm feeling really good right now. I'm gonna do one more round of cleaning before this is all said and done, where I will use 220 grit on an orbital sander and sand and then wipe down with acetone and I will be ready to paint at that point. I think I did a really good job getting everything cleaned up really nicely. I've done several rounds, as you just saw. With any paint job, 90% of the work is prepped. So I was able to get a lot of the rust and calcification off of the trailer. I tried to get in every little crevice that I could. And the last time I sanded was last night. That's why I'll do one more light sanding today. I'm not gonna get too heavy and deep with it. So just running over it right now with 220 on the orbital. This way, any kind of overnight calcification, I know that sounds crazy, but within a 24 hour period, you know, you never know, it's aluminum. It's always a good idea to sand one more time. After sanding, here's a wipe down with acetone, just giving it a really good wipe down, changing out the towels frequently to ensure that I clean the surface properly. This is the paint that I'm going with, spray can paint. I've used this in several other applications in my bills, so I figured why not stick with it. Uh, it really gives a good professional finish. The spray nozzle on this thing is amazing point and shoot in any direction. Using spray cans can be tricky. Be sure to follow the directions on the can to ensure you're spraying from the right distance, 
have the correct motion and painting in the right temperature. A common practice is to spray in small sweeping motions to ensure a good overlap of paint. This will also help to reduce runs in your paint. When in doubt, start in a small area or practice on a piece of cardboard to get your technique right. All right, guys, it's the next day and what a night that was last night getting this thing painted. And I had to stop because at some point, you know, all of the paint fumes was just getting in the house. My wife is like, what is going on? But all in all, I mean, I'm pretty impressed so far. We'll see how long it stands the test of time. I picked a really good paint, but you never know, guys. DIY is what it is. It took me, I believe, two and a half cans to do the trailer alone. And I did another can to do the other parts, which I'll get to in a second. The finish is really nice. It looks really good. I have not got this out into the daylight yet to see how it'll look outside and i think with the coats that i did which i only did one coat but i did a generous coat my only concern might be that i may not have put enough on the top because that is going to be the most exposed to the sun and that's just might just be just me in my head but i started a second guess maybe i need to put a second coat at least on the top of the trailer, but I really don't have the time. So I think I'm gonna just ride this out, see how long it lasts. How does it hold up to the weather? All of the bolts have been covered and protected as well, right? So my goal was to paint everything on this trailer. I even took time to, and this is me, not a requirement on a rehab of a trailer, but I painted all my bolts, all my nuts, washers, everything. All my U-bolts, everything is black. So pretty excited about that. When it's all put back together, which I'm about to do right now, it'll look really, really good. Put on my brackets here. The fenders, to me, came out really good. I could actually walk this over to the sun since I got the door open, but let's try to get a good angle of this stuff. It's a little bit dusty from being in the garage, but outside of that, really good shine we got to get this thing put back together i got to get my tape off to reveal my stickers my vin number etc i'm just going to do everything in reverse that i did in the first place All right, so I got the most of the accessories back on, fenders are on. I think it was a good decision to go with the micro sanding pad, just a super thin, probably the equivalent of 320 grit, and I think that came out awesome. Got the four brackets on. These are going to hold the main bunks on there. I tightened them up, didn't do a full tightening because I want to get the actual bunk boards on them, and once I get the boards installed, I'll be able to do the final tightening because these may move slightly and need to move in order for the bunks to rest the way they should. Was able to replace the screws that were holding these in with stainless steel new screws for that. Need to step over here and get the bunk boards all carpeted. Got this off of Amazon. This is by CUDA. I will leave that linked in the description below for you guys. You don't have to go looking far for it. Fiberglass resin. It's completely dried up. This thing got away from me. I got really busy, so it's been a week that that's had time to dry, so I'm good there to get the bunk carpet on that. Now, in order to make this video not be too long, I won't show all the details when it comes to carpeting the bunk boards. Instead, I'll do a separate video showing you exactly what I did and the techniques I used to do it. So stay tuned to the channel for that video. The main thing I need to do right now is to get my new hubs on, which I do have from eTrailer. These guys took I mean, I think with the bad weather we had was the cause, but it took over a month to get these boys in. But I finally got them. 
and guys, when, if you're doing a project like this, just make sure you order the right ones because you have to pay attention to the size of everything from your axle to your bearings, just to make sure that you get everything right. And I also ordered from e-trailer some new tires and they are in here. Yeah, man, that's gonna look sweet. I was originally planning to paint my rims black, but I may not do that just because I don't have a lot of time to keep working on the trailer and I gotta keep things moving, but we'll see where I land on that. So I feel like I'm nearing the end of it, but I'm always afraid to say that because it always just gets jinxed. So what I've done so far is just clean off the shaft of any contaminants that may have accumulated on here while the trailer is sitting for the last week or so. And I just used mineral spirits and wiped it down. So got it nice and cleaned off right there. And what I wanna call, just call out on the specific hubs I bought, they come with the race already installed. And what that is, is a cylinder. It's a cylinder right in there that goes on the inside of the hub. And that's where your bearings will be mounted up against. There's a front race and a rear one. If you guys can see it right in there. So that's already pre-installed. I don't have to install that myself, depending on what you buy. You may have to install it yourself. They also have hub options where everything is installed. Bearings, everything, all you do is pull out the box, plop it on, lock it down, and so on. So the first thing I wanna do is pack my bearings with grease. And for this, I'm gonna not do it manually because time is important. I have a packer for it. And I suggest people get this because honestly, it's it works really fast and it's cheap. I mean, I think this was only $15 or so on Amazon and it saves you a lot of time and handache. So I'm gonna push this down, get the grease pushed up through the bearings, get both of them greased up and get them inside the hub. That one's done. That's what I mean, this saves you a lot of time and I'll show you exactly what this looks like. So you now can see the grease that pushed right through that bearing all the way around. See a lot of grease right there. Now I can just take some of the excess grease and grease up the outside of the bearing. I'm also gonna drop some grease inside the hub. Again, to prevent this video from getting too long, I won't go into all the details for installing new hubs, bearings, etc. If you wanna see the complete end-to-end -end process, click the link at the top of the screen, and I'll also post that video card at the end of this video. All right. Done, looks awesome. I'm gonna move on to the next thing, which will be to get the main bunks up. I've got my brackets right over here, all painted and ready to go. Got my bolts. What I will do is install my brackets first, grab my bunk boards and get my measurement together. I know that I want the bunk to be at least nine inches hanging off the back of the trailer. That'll serve me well for my 14 foot boat. So let's go ahead and do this right now and get my bunks up here measured up, drilled out, and installed. As you can see, the trailer came out pretty good. I'm very satisfied with how it looks. It, I mean, it's a big upgrade from what it was before. If you're looking at the details that you can clearly see on the trailer now, it looks totally different, a lot more appealing, and will go great with the boat, which will be painted black as well. Can't wait to get to that part, but I wanted to show this video, especially one, this is my first trailer rehab project, so I figured I'd take you guys along for that and show you my version of how to do it. You know, if anything, if I was to do this over again, I would suggest using a primer on the aluminum first. And that's just always an all around good thing to do. I probably should have did it, at least do a spray can aluminum primer 
Just something simple to get an extra barrier down to help the paint, one, stick to the trailer and last over the test of time. And as you scrape things or bump your trailer, you know, things are gonna happen and when it's painted, yeah, you're gonna see the scratch and all of that. So some primer would be a good thing. And another thing I would suggest that I didn't do was to do multiple coats. I did one good coating. I made sure everything was covered good once and then I'm like, I'm done. I wanna move on to something else. My suggestion to anyone out there taking on a project like this is just do multiple coats. If you have the time, I mean, the 90% of the time you spend will be prepping this thing. So you might as well drop multiple coats on it. I might put another coat on, at least the top side that's gonna take the sun beating on it all the time at some future date. But for now, I'm gonna move on to the next project. So those are my suggestions. But man, this thing really came out well. Love how the black on black looks, the trailer bunks match the rest of the trailer. And yeah, I'm not gonna paint the rims. Uh, it's really grown on me to have that contrast with the chrome looking rims. They're not chrome, they're galvanized rims, but it looks awesome to have some contrast so everything's just not blacked out. So I'm definitely gonna leave the rims as is. I love how it looks. I can't wait to get the boat on it painted and looking just as good as the trailer. Hope you guys will stick around and see that as well. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and a thumbs up if you got something out of this video. We'll see you on the next one.